Kelly Barlow Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I upload a new video, question mark, depending on the option that you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links, you guessed it, in the description box below. So what do I have going on for you for today? Today, I'm bringing to you another one of those Dollar Tree farmhouse chic DIYs that I think you're absolutely gonna love. Today's DIY serves as a table centerpiece, and I love the outcome. I'm gonna say that it is using just about 100% Dollar Tree items. It is very budget friendly, and the outcome is amazing. This is one that I think would be suitable for a wedding centerpiece. If you are getting ready to do a wedding and you're going with that farmhouse chic theme, this would be perfect for it. I did it, it's on my kitchen table, and I love it, and it's probably going down as one of my top 10 favorite farmhouse DIYs to date. I'm gonna quit my gabbing, let's jump into it, and let's do some Dollar Tree farmhouse DIY in on a budget, cause why not? Cause we can, let's get to it. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? You'll wanna stick around to the end of the video to see if it's your creation that's being featured in today's video. Alrighty, so getting started. It's almost the 4th of July, so Dollar Tree has these here plaques. These plaques are great to pick up when you see them to keep in your stash for repurposing. I don't really want to waste my time trying to cover up the decorative side of this plaque, so I dug into my felt and figured that the felt would be perfect because this plaque is going to be face down. Why would I try to cover up the front of this with some paint, waste my time painting it when the back side of this plaque is a blank canvas? So I say use some fabric, use some scrapbooking paper, or use some felt like I am. Did I mention that this is another one of those Dollar Tree wood block DIYs? Mm-hmm, well it is. You know me, I love to create with these. And so with this DIY, I'm gonna start off by lining the plaque on the long side first and I'm standing up the blocks. Now keep in mind that these plaques are different sizes. So when I pick these plaques to work with these wood blocks, I try to pick a size where I don't need to cut the blocks. And so if you can find this 4th of July plaque, it's perfect. You won't have to cut your blocks because not everybody has the means of cutting these blocks and these blocks are kind of pesky to cut with a handsaw. And so if not, I would line up your blocks first and then I would cut your plaque instead of cutting the blocks themselves. These plaques are really easy to cut through just by using a ruler and a razor and simply scoring it several times and it will just break apart pretty easily and you'll probably have to use some sandpaper to smooth out that edge. But again, it really is a lot easier than worrying about cutting the blocks. For the short sides of the plaque, yeah, I'm not even going to try to explain what I'm doing because I don't think that I could word this very eloquently. But you can see that I'm putting the blocks, I guess, on the corner sides of the plaque and just leaving that center space there in the middle. And we're going to do this on each end of the plaque. And to fill in that empty space, yep, I just glued together four of the wood blocks and I'm going to place them standing up just like so. And that is going to save you the hassle of having to cut any of these wood blocks because the way I'm setting these blocks up here fits this plaque perfectly. And pretty much from this point on, I'm just gonna build up the sides. And I decided to go three high, but it really is your choice. If you want this to be taller and deeper, you're gonna build it up more. For the DIY today, three high is perfect. I want to add a handle to this, what I'm going to call a caddy, you can call it a bin, whatever it is. And to do that, I'm going to glue my blocks together side by side, just like so. And I'm going to do them the length, the same length, I guess I should say, as the blocks that are stacked on the top of the plaque. The only difference with this is that I did decide to go two layers thick just to give the handle a bit of substance and thickness. I felt like one layer was just too thin. It looked flimsy. 
Alrighty, so let's fast forward a bit, right? You can see on the bottom that I went ahead and added a third layer to the base, and I also stacked the sides of my handle four blocks high, but remember, each set of blocks is four blocks thick. I'm gonna go ahead and glue my handle right across the top like so, but you're gonna see that on the end, it's just not long enough. So to compensate for that gap, I went ahead and just glued a block off to the side just like so because it was the perfect thickness and I feel like it finished it off perfectly. Now it's time to put those patient pants on and I gotta let this dry before I paint it. The colors that I'm going with for today, surprise, surprise, some of Waverly's white chalk paint, yep, antique wax as well, and I'm gonna switch it up and use this Hello Hobby Stone Gray. This seems to be the color scheme for my farmhouse DIYs this summer. I am really loving it. Change is good, right? That also seems to be the theme of my life lately. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a nice good coating of the white chalk paint. I have had some people ask, why chalk paint versus acrylic paint? In all honesty, chalk paint is a form of acrylic paint. It's just got that chalk finish, that matted finish, and I feel like it's a thicker paint so you get better coverage with less coats. Now, if you wanna use an apple barrel or a folk art, it's gonna work just as well, but you are going to need several more coats to get the coverage that I'm getting for this or that I want for this. And so again, this whole piece is gonna get a nice base coat of some white chalk paint. Once my base coat is gonna dry, Yep, I'm gonna go in with a second one. That's what I'm doing here. But before this coat dries, while it's wet, I'm gonna go in with some of the antique wax. I'm gonna go in with some of that gray, and I'm gonna just kind of add it to the white using kind of a dry brush stroke, giving it that nice clouded smooth look, adding just a bit of color, adding just a bit of texture and character to it. That's the look I'm going for for this piece. I bet you thought we were done. We're not. For this next step, you're gonna need four of these wood drawers by, yep, Crafter Square. You know where to get them, at the Dollar Tree. I want this drawer to set at an angle, so to do that, just by placing four of the blocks right underneath, we're gonna glue them, of course. We're gonna get it at this angle, which is the angle that I'm looking for, and this is the outer part of the drawer that we're using, and I'm gonna do that to two of them. And again, I am batting 100. I did not show that I did insert the drawer itself into the outer piece, just as you see these two in the back. And to keep them at an elevated height, I did place a couple of Jenga blocks at the bottom so it wouldn't go all the way down. Just to kind of achieve different heights and I guess different angles. With these, I am also going to give them a good face coat of the white chalk paint. On these pots, I'm gonna call them pots because that's what I'm using for. I'm gonna add some of Folk Art's succulent green. Now I'm gonna use the same technique that I used on the outside of the caddy. I just really want it to incorporate some of this green onto the inside so that way you can kind of differentiate the pots from the caddy, adding a bit more color and yeah, making it a bit farmhouse chic. And to these pots, I love the way these turned out. I'm gonna add some of Dollar Tree's flowers, a nice soft, subtle color, some of Walmart's lamb ears to give it that nice farmhouse chic feel. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? It goes to Mary Ortiz, who's bringing us her recreation of this oldie but goodie farmhouse sign. Absolutely loving it. Thank you, Mary, for sharing your creation with us today. And look at here. Kayla's doing another Dollar Tree DIY where she is transforming this shadow box into a Galaxy Zodiac shadow box. You can find the link to this video, this DIY video, this Dollar Tree DIY video, guess where? in the description box below. I told you farmhouse chic, right? I mean, it's not just farmhouse, it's farmhouse chic. 
And I feel like when I just do farmhouse, it's got that age rusted look to it. But this just has that chic feel to it, even though it's farmhouse that I absolutely love. And like I said, this would make for a great centerpiece, a budget friendly centerpiece at a wedding on those tables. Oh my word. Okay, somebody in my family needs to get married because I'm ready to DIY a whole wedding. Okay, maybe not, but well, maybe I am. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed today's Dollar Tree Farmhouse chic DIY. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to, you guessed it, 5,000 likes. Because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay positive, please, and bye for now, everybody.